Hello trans lovers, I'm your host Adrian Thierry with EDM NYC and I'm at Future Sound of Egypt 350 in New York City. With me is Max Graham who's playing tonight. Let's get right into it. Perfect. When did you know that Future Sound of Egypt 350 was coming to New York City? When my agent called me and said you're playing Future Sound of Egypt New York City. What did you think about them coming to New York City? Well it makes perfect sense, I mean it's one of the biggest dance music markets in the world. Um, by far. I mean, it, it, it leads to a little bit of complacency on the part of New Yorkers because they do have it really good. <laughs> but everybody comes through here and everybody treats New York like a huge stop on any tour. Was New York City selected simply because it's New York City and it's exceptional? Or is it because there's an overall trance market growing in the U.S.? I think a bit of both. I mean, it, it's always going to be New York and it's going to be exceptional. And it's, it's like, for me, my open to close sets, the flagship show is New York. Not because it's New York, but because I've developed that connection with the city. So I would have really have to ask Fila if he feels that it's because trance is so strong here mm -hmm. or because it's New York and it's like, if you're going to pick six or seven cities to go to, New York's going to be one of them, you mm -hmm. know? But I think it, it works both ways. I think it is an exceptional city, especially for, for events. I mean, look what we have, like, two and a half thousand people here tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, in a beautiful old theater type venue, like you can't find that everywhere. But also I think the trans scene is very strong here, so it works both ways, I think. If you were to describe New York City as a personality, would it be a he or she? And what would that personality be like? It's such a crazy city. I mean, I lived here in elementary school. Really? And the first year of high school, yeah, I did a little video when I did my open to close about how I grew up in New York and it was my first exposure to nightclubs. And huh. What I love about New York, and you don't get any other city, is I know I'm not quite answering the question as easily as you'd like, but what I like is you can stare out a cab window as it speeds down any, any avenue in New York, and you can see literally people from every walk of life over the course of three or four blocks, mm -hmm. all walking past each other with absolutely no prejudice or preconceived notions, or like everybody just is like, yeah, so what? Everybody's completely different. You have the total weirdos, you have the total straight edges, and you have everyone in between. That's what's so cool is they're all shopping at the same delis, buying the same bagels, getting the same coffee, and everyone is just like, that's New York. That's what makes it so cool. It feels like there's a total acceptance. Where do you fit in on that personality scale? If you were to describe yourself to someone who didn't know you at all, how wow. would you describe yourself? Um, I'm very Aries. You know, I'm very, like, I'm kind of stubborn. I'm like, I have my own path. It's sort of like, get on my train or get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I, I realize that and I accept that. But I'm also very, like, I'm very focused. I'm very passionate about what I do. And I'm very, like, driven to succeed within what I want to do. You know, I gave up DJing once and then I sort of snapped out of it and came back. And mm -hmm. now I've been stronger than ever because I have that motivation to really, like, reach where I want to go. And I think that's my personality, is to be very driven, very focused, very organized. And it wasn't, it wasn't always like that, but as I've gotten older, I've definitely become that. You do have a, a unique story in that you were in the business, you left it for a little while, and then you came back. What made you decide to exit the business? Well, I was frustrated with myself and the industry. I was with management at the time who were... I mean, I confuse them, so it really comes down on me. But I was trying to make music to fit into a scene that I wasn't really part of. Like, I was, I was listening, okay, what's popular? I need to make that. Like, I need to, you know, further my career. And I wasn't just saying, you know what, I want to make what, what moves me as an artist. I was saying, like, I, I need to make music that's going to hit the charts. I need to make mm -hmm. music that's going to get what's me high? gigs. And, and then I found myself, like, you know, uh, auditioning guitarists for, like, it just, it was so the wrong thing for me. And my agent at the time, or my management at the time, was sort of like, yeah, you need to go more commercial, we need to look at like Radio One and Pete Tong, and you need to get on those shows, and you need to be like these other DJs, and it was completely the wrong move for me. Mm -hmm. So I just said, like, I need a, a total reset, I need a total mm -hmm. reboot. And I genuinely thought I could step away permanently, and I opened another business and did a few other things, but, you know, once you get that bug, and I think every, every, true DJ will agree with me like you can't step away from that plugging your headphones in and having those four hours of connecting with a room of a few hundred people mm -hmm. it's just impossible to step away from so 
that time off though helped me reset and figure out what, what I loved and what I was passionate about versus what I thought I needed to do to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, for a while I was trying to put a square peg in a, in a round hole. Mm -hmm. And when I took that year off, I came back and I knew exactly, I put all, aligned all the stars and got to work. Mm -hmm. And now here we are. What did you do for that year? A year I opened an Apple store. Um, it's, it's a very small store. It's not like a big Apple store like you would have in most cities. Mm -hmm. It was an Apple service provider, which we would um, service and sell Apple products for local customers. Maybe someone else would say, like, oh, you know, why would you open an Apple store? You don't have any business experience. But the truth is you did, because when you're a DJ and a producer, you are a business of one, and you are an entrepreneur. So what tools from DJing and producing really helped you when you opened and ran that Apple store? I think marketing and self-promotion, I mean, is a big part of being an artist, especially now with social media, like you really have to be a self-promoter nonstop. Um, and so adapting that to a business wasn't that hard, sort of, you know, it wasn't about me, it was about the company, but I still knew how to sell the product and, and sell the business. I, my partner was good with like retail and dealing with customers, and that was something I wasn't good at, <laughs> because I had never had to deal with having to deal with a customer who was, you know, in a bad mood, who you have to be nice to and all that stuff. I was like, what? <laughs> Customer's always right. This is, she's not right, you know? But he's like, this is so I would work in the back, he would work in the front. So it was a little bit of a learning curve as far as that goes. But um, organizing and, and, you know, organizing the back end of the store, like how things ran, was my forte. And that comes from, you know, when you travel, you're dealing with flights and hotels and gigs and itineraries and you know tech writers and all that becomes very easy and I'm very hands-on I book all my own travel yeah. which a lot of DJs don't but I I'm obsessed with the madness of the airline industry <laughs> and how just it makes no sense so I book all my own flights because I love like finding the best routes and flying the airlines I like so that kind of thing like finding suppliers for the store and you know, cutting our costs and all that stuff was, was my forte. You like to do research? Yeah, I like to do research. I like to do stats. I like to do spreadsheets. As crazy as that sounds, yeah, like I, I live, when I'm on the plane, I live in a spreadsheet with all my gigs, all my flights, all my, like, you know, commission to my agent, taxes, all that stuff. I like wow. it. It's a, bit, it's a bit weird that it matches with my artist brain, but I think I've forced myself to learn it because I think it's an important part of being a self-sufficient you know, entrepreneur, as you said. Would you describe yourself as an introvert? I'm not very social when I don't have to be. I definitely like to recharge on my own, quiet. You know, like when I'm home, I will stay home for two weeks, work in the studio. I won't go out for drinks with friends. Like, I've, to, you know, I'm gonna, my friends are gonna kill me, but I've actually gone home and not told my friends that I'm home. I've gone home for a week and then flown back out and they thought I was away the whole time. Because I just want to like be home alone and get my work done and work on music. So you so like I'm, to I'm, spend time with yourself? I, I stay home a lot. Like I don't uh. like going out and being social. But when I am out, I'm not the quiet guy in the corner. <laughs> I'm definitely happy to be like talking to everybody and very social. I'm always joking and laughing with my friends. So Finish the following sentence. What the trance scene really needs right now is... A reboot. I think it needs a fresh perspective from all the artists involved. I think that it's kind of, a, a lot of guys have moved over to a mainstream kind of EDM big room sound mm -hmm. and they're trying to pull the trans label over to that mm -hmm. to help themselves to help, you know, basically if they can say, okay, trans is now this, then they're still playing trans. Mm -hmm. They don't want to admit that they're not playing trans, they're now playing commercial EDM big room. And then you have the 140 guys, which I would say are like Ali Fila, mm -hmm. John O'Callaghan. We're kind of over here. There's a lot of great energy. Brian Kearney, Carney. Sorry, I always say Kearney, and everyone's like, "It's Carney, <laughs> Carney." Um, you know, those guys have a lot of good energy going on. But then you have a whole group that have kind of moved on to electro and big room, and it's a bit disjointed. And I think it needs a sort of regroup and a reboot with a new, a whole new sort of energy behind it. And then it will always be there. Mel melody will always be king but it needs kind of a new energy behind it. I think it's a bit lost at the moment. What's the one thing that you just wish the general public would understand about trance? I think what frustrates me the most is 
two parts. They complain when you don't change, and they complain when you change. Mm. And I think they need to understand that artists need to keep moving forward. We can't do the same thing over and over because I mean, we would blow our heads off. Like it would just be so boring to make the same music for 10 years. Yeah. And they need to accept that it's going to change no matter what. Mm -hmm. And not hold artists, like artists have to understand that if they're gonna profit off an emotional connection, they have to deal with people being upset when they move on to another sound. Mm -hmm. But the fans have to realize that the artists are free to move on to another sound. They just have to stop supporting them with their wallet, with their social media, with their, you know, with their word of mouth. But you can't hold it against someone for changing. And some guys change for the money because, you know, when you're 20, you can be an artist and not care. When you're 35 and you have two kids, it's like now your priorities have changed. And you see everyone over there making, you know, five times what you're making and you just have to change your sound a little bit and you're going to be making that. Now you have kids, you have a different priority. And a lot of fans don't realize that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm never going to fault someone for making that switch. I might, I can only do what I want to do personally, whether I want to make the money or be an artist or be broke or whatever, you know. <laughs> I wish they would understand sometimes why artists make that change and to let them make that change but know that they don't have to support them but not get so angry. And it's all. not personal. It's not personal. Like look at let's say Above and Beyond. They have a, such a strong emotional connection with their fans that when they change they have to accept that people are going to be upset. You can't sort of say, well, why are people upset? I'm an artist, I can do what I want. When you've created such a tight emotional bond yeah. between you and your crowd through the music that you've made, you have to accept that you're going to upset some people if you make that change. If you've profited off that connection, you have to accept that that's there and take responsibility for the fact that you're going to upset some people. Sounds like breaking up. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it is. It's a really strange thing when you connect with people through the music that you make and then you change the style and they get upset and it's, it's a constant ebb and flow and we're seeing it all the time yeah. especially now as trance is changing you have a lot of guys who are moving to a different sound and a lot of people are upset and a lot of you know there's a lot of negativity which makes more people want to leave which is also frustrating because you see a lot of fans getting super pissed and it's yeah. like you know love the ones who stay don't get angry with the ones who leave and then that's the better move but they instead they spend all their energy getting angry with the ones who leave and it makes the ones who stay go, well, why am I even staying? Sour you know, everyone's all so negative. So it's, that's, that's why I think it needs a, a big reboot. It needs kind of everyone to step back and come back strong. My last question is, let's say you have a time machine. Doc Brown Ooh. comes with his car from Back to the Future and you get this time machine, but you can only go back into the past and meet yourself when you are just starting out your DJ yeah. career and you can only have 10 seconds with yourself and give yourself one piece of advice. What do you tell yourself? Probably stick to one style of music. I'm too diverse for my own good. I'm kind of all over the place as an artist, but as a businessman, I know it would have been a better move to stay with one style and grow with one scene. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Richie's techno, Armin's trance. You know, and you have like these different, you know, Skrillex's dubstep. And I was yeah. kind of all over the place and it leads to you not really fitting in, you know, you have a, a, a few fans from each group. So my artist brain doesn't like that, but my businessman brain would say stick to one style and, and really sell that. It's like a friend to everyone is a friend to no one, you know. That's kind of been my career a little bit and that's why now I feel like after 15 years, finally, like I feel like everything is aligned. Max, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Thank interview. you so much it's for having wonderful. me. Sorry, I saw you were dying with the mic. I know, I, ca I was like, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, I'm talking so much, and he's like, can you fucking shut up? <laughs>